Welcome. Welcome back to a hands-on learning experience that you too can do in your own home. So I have provided you with springs and such, but we'll be talking about how we can do it a little bit differently later if we want to. This is going to be our system. We've talked about this system before. This is a mass spring damper system, only we are not going to use the damper. We're going to pretend like the damping is equal to zero. It's pretty low in our system anyway, but that's what we're going to say it is. So here we have, um, we're going to establish our datum. We're going to look at our free body diagram for this system. The free body diagram is going to look something like this. So we're going to have, uh, here's our mass. Before we forget, we better put our del ampere force in. We, we know that if we stretch this thing in its, in its, to its positive direction, we're going to get a spring force here that is Kx, and we're going to get a damping force here that is Bx dot. And there's one more force on here. Well, we have to also put the force F of T. And there's one more force on here that I didn't, uh, I didn't talk about. We haven't talked about before, but this is going to be the weight is Mg the weight force. And, and normally we've been neglecting this and we'll just talk a little bit about how we neglect that. And then when we do our free body, once we've done our free body diagram, we're going to do, we're going to find out the sum of the forces in the x direction, mx double dot plus bx dot plus kx, ooh, not x dot, just kx, uh, minus mg uh, minus f equals zero. So those are the forces that we have. And then one of the things that I want to point out here is that um, we're going to, uh, we can, so uh, we're going to start, we're going to start the system with uh, F equal to zero. So we're going to not put any force on it or the initial force is going to be equal to zero. And then what we, what we end up having, we can find M X double dot plus the X dot plus kx equals mg. And one of the things is if we're looking at it in static equilibrium. Dude, you want some equilibriums? So we'll look at it if static equilibrium. That means that both of these forces, because it's static, there are no dynamic forces. And what we can do is we can find out that x0, the initial position, is equal to mg over k. So we're good with that. Now we're going to, um, I'm going to, I'm going to, in my mind's eye, I'm going to let this thing go. I'm going to gently push this thing down so that it goes to its new position. I'm going to call that uh, x0. I'm going to call that x0. So it's, it, it, and if I put it at x0, it'll just stay there. It'll just stay there. And then I'm going to define, I'm going to say that x is equal to x0 plus z. I'm going to define some new dummy variable z. And what I'm going to be able to do with this, if I differentiate this, I can see that x dot is equal to x dot 0 plus z dot. But notice here, x dot 0 is a constant, x dot is a constant, so x dot 0 is equal to 0. So that means that x dot equals z dot, and that means that, and I can differentiate that again, x double dot is equal to z double dot. And so now one of the things that I might want to do, I might be interested in doing, is to uh, I'm just trying to find different colors to use here. We'll see if they can do it. So I can plug in these new variables, mz double dot plus bz dot plus, let's see, I'm, I'm substituting in for z, so this is going to be plus k times, now what is x here? x is equal to x naught plus z, so this is going to be k x is x0 plus z is equal to uh, mg plus f. Now, right away, you should be able to notice that this part of this, this is uh, k 
x0 plus kz equals mg plus f. And then you'll notice here, kx0 and mg, those cancel. And so we're left with a new equation of motion for this system. Equation of motion for this system is mz double dot plus bz dot plus kz equals f. Uh, well, I just made gravity disappear. Now, actually, uh, I've written a paper before, one of my earliest papers. The way I made gravity disappear in an earlier paper was I just tied colored balloons, helium balloons, onto the system so that it just floated in the air. Or you can move it out to outer space and then there's no gravity out there either. And so here's our equation motion. And then it turns out that Shakespeare, you know, arose. What's up? To run yonder window breaks. It is the east and Juliet is the sun. And then somewhere along that he says, a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. So I can just say mx double dot plus bx dot plus kx equals f. There's, again, no gravity uh, because we assume it starts at static equilibrium. Okay, so we assume it starts at static equilibrium. All right, so here we are. We've got our equation of motion, established our equation of motion, and moreover, we're going to do for our MKB system, we're going to assume that B is equal to zero. And so we've got MX double dot plus KX equals zero, and we're also going to assume that f is equal to zero. So we've got to have a, an initial condition, and I'm going to leave this to you. I've done this a couple of times. I'm going to, you should be able to solve this equation to get the analytic solution that says x is equal to x zero cosine of omega n t. In this case, where omega n is equal to the square root of k over m. All right, so now we've got our equation of motion, we've got our analytic solution, and what that means is that we can just use MATLAB, and, and again, so what we're trying to do is look at MATLAB. So we're going to look at MATLAB to plot this, and here's some of the MATLAB commands that you might need to plot this. So the first thing we have to do is to find the time vector. Time goes from zero to, um, you know, some by some increment delta t to some t final, right? So that's how you define that the time vector. So now we have a time vector, and then you just say, oh, x is equal to x0 times cosine of uh, omega n times t. Uh, again, there's certain things you're going to have to, uh, you're going to have to define omega n. You have to know what x0 is. So when we're doing the experiment, one of the things, because x0 comes to, in, to be an important in the solution, when we, do x, when we do the solution, we'll need to kind of pay some attention to where x0 is. And in our experimental system, the way we're going to do our experimental system is we're going to have a ruler here, right? One, two, three, but we're just going to have a ruler here. And so what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to measure where x0 is. x0, or z equals 0. All right? So we've got our system. We've got our analytic solution. We can also then, we might want to just be able to just say plot time, comma, x, comma, and then we might want to put, put a red pentagon with a dashed line in there, for instance. You can look at some of the help plot. will tell you some of the different things you can do, uh, ways that you can make your lines look as you're doing it. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do some experimental work to kind of characterize the parameters that we have. So, of course, 
we can just weigh, we can just use the mass. We can, I'm, I've, I've put, given you some scales. Scales to, to measure masses. Right, so I've given you scales that can measure mass. Uh, how do we measure the spring rate? Well, here's what we're going to do to measure the spring rate. What we're going to do is we're just going to put the deflection, we're going to put the position X and then the force F. And we're just going to measure those two things. So we don't know, like this is, I'm going to call this as like, this is one, this is 2.2 whatever, right? And it turns out that if I start at x0, that's where it is. And if I put it, if I, if I, if I, if I go back, I'm going to measure, I'm going to measure this spring length. The spring length, I'm going to call that 0 0.9. So this is uh, x unloaded. Right, so there's x unloaded. Then here's x0. And I can measure x0. This is f equals mg, f1. And I can put a little mark here. I think, I don't know if you guys ever if they teach you this, but way back in the day when we used to do graphs by hand all the time, the way you're supposed to do is put a tiny dot with a circle around it, and that way the dot is in the really exact spot, and the circle just highlights that you need to look at that. So we're going to put a second weight on here, and, and we're going to find out that this is going to be x2, and we're going to find out where this way this goes. And then we're going to put, I've asked you to make three weights. X3. This is going to be F3. This is going to be F2. And here's our graph. And clearly, what, what our graph looks like, this is the spring rate K. We can measure the K, which is equal to, the K is equal to delta F over delta x. Newtons per meter. Well, okay, let's review really quickly. Let's just make a review of how we're going to measure the three points on our graph. So we've got to measure the free length of the spring. And then I would just want to point out to you that when you're doing your calculations, the units are going to be important. And I've circled this one for you. And I just want to point out to you that uh, on this ruler, these units are incorrect. You'll notice that this is 1, 2, but they're not in millimeters. These little ones are in millimeters, but not where it says 1, 2. These units are incorrect. Look on your rulers, and you'll see that these say centimeters here. And when you make your calculations, if you use the wrong units, you will get the wrong answers. So we're going to put a one, first weight on there. We're going to measure the distance. We're going to put the second weight on here. We'll measure the distance. And the third weight on here and measure the distance. And clearly, you know, this is the point of that uh, making gravity disappear thing, is that we should not start our graph. We can start our graph at 5.5 centimeters. We can start it there. But we could also just subtract that off and start it at zero and then subtract the uh, free length from this value, this value, and that value. In that case. And so this is definitely a graph that you want to have in your lab report, right? Okay. Hold on a minute. Okay. So now that we've got, now that we know our mass, we know our spring rate. We can, we have graphed, we've made a graph. So we, first of all, we have an analytic solution and we can also graph the analytic solution. So this is the graph of the analytic solution where this is, I don't know how many cycles you want to put on here, where this is time and this is uh, position. And, and one of the things that we might want to be able to, well, certainly you want to do at least enough time 
that you can measure one period, period, which is equal to 2 pi over omega n. And, and what I suggest that you do is you watch your spring go. You count it one, two, three. You make it count it ten times, and then you can determine the period experimentally perfectly. And you can check to see, huh, does my experimental period equal my theoretical? That's one of the things that we want to know. Theoretical. All right, so we're ready to go with our experiment. We have our, we have our spring. I've started with a red spring here. Got a little hooks there, so we're going to put it down. Let me go ahead. I've got my physics toolbox suite going. Let's see if that that okay. So that makes it start recording. So let's start it recording here. We're gonna see it's about four centimeters. Four. So let's let's start it with like a two centimeter start. Ready? Go. Now we're taking data. Right? We don't really even have to count on this one. And I've, I've chosen the slow one to do it at, right? So, okay. So then we can stop it. And now, one of the other things that we can do is we can take our mass spring damper system. Probably when you, whenever you weigh, whenever you determine the mass of different pieces of things in here, also mass your phone. Because we're going to use physics toolbox sweep. Oh, well, just mash your phone. We're not going to do that yet. So one of the things that I ask you to do is I ask you then to find an unknown mass and tell me what omega n is. Right, so you give me, an, I can give you any mass. Now that you know what the spring rate is, I can give you any mass and you should be able to tell me what the spring rate is and then try it. Experimental validation. We all need validation, baby. So here we have some experimental validation. The next thing that I ask you to do is I ask you to find an unknown and with a known mass this allows you to right we know that k over m equals omega n squared if we know what the mass is and we measure the natural frequency, we should be able to predict K. And then also validate. Validation. Validation by marks. Okay, so now we've done that. So the final piece of it that we're going to do is we're going to take that same system here. In this case, it's just a spring. Whatever, whatever mass you want to do, whatever the mass is, make sure you know what the mass is and put your phone on there. Using, uh, there's a number of these, but I like to use physics toolbox suite. Using physics toolbox suite, it allows you to measure the acceleration in three axes. So you can measure the acceleration in this direction, this direction, and this direction. Uh, this is, uh, let's call this uh, acceleration in the X, acceleration in the Y, and acceleration in the Z. So you can measure them in all three directions. And then, of course, if you're measuring linear motion, you, you kind of hope that those accelerations that are not in the direction of motion are zero. 
And, and then what we get out of that is we'll get a, we can import this into MATLAB. You'll have to experiment with that a little bit. We'll, we can, if you have questions to find out, we can figure out how to do that together. I haven't done it in a long time, but if I can do it, you can do it. So we're going to import that into MATLAB and then we're going to plot it, right? And so if we plot it, what we can do, oh, what, what do we expect? Before you plot anything, what do we expect? What do I expect? So let's see, if I know that x is equal to x0 cosine omega and t, then I took calculus, so I should know that x dot is equal, let's see, derivative of the cosine is minus the sine omega and t. It's minus omega and x0 sine omega and t. And then I also can figure out what the acceleration is, is minus omega n squared x0 sine, derivative of the sine is the cosine, cosine omega n t. So I, I now I know exactly what I expect to have happen. What I expect to have happen, again, this is time. This time, this is a x double dot in this direction. It's still a cosine term, right? So this, this is still a cosine. I expect it to have the same period. I expect it to have the same period. But this time, it's got an amplitude. It's going to have an amplitude that is going to be minus amplitude is equal to minus omega n squared x zero. And so that's why I said to you, pay attention when you start it, where is x zero? Because that has to do with how big is your acceleration term. Now this is going to have noise and everything like that in it and that sort of thing. Uh, and so it's going to, we have to decide how do we want to compare this? And so it turns out, it turns out that if I have, if I have x double dot, and I integrate x double dot with respect to time, then that gives me x dot for the velocity. Right? So I could take this and integrate it. There's issues with it, that. It, the issue is, is that if x double dot is equal to some x double dot hat plus even a tiny error, then the integral of this, the integral of x double dot, is equal to the integral of x double dot hat plus the integral of error, which is the integral of error is just error times time. So we could say that this is the true velocity, right? All right, so then what we can do is then, if we, if we do integrate that, now we can integrate x dot to get x. But again, there's a little bit of error here, right? We're integrating not just x dot, because here's, here's x dot, but we're also integrating the error times time squared. So no matter how tiny a little error you have in the measurement of x double dot, by the time you've integrated it twice, you have um, an error that is growing by the amount of time that has passed squared. So you're going to have a lot of trouble with that. So maybe the better way to do it then is that we do have the analytic solution. Let's use the analytic solution. We do have the analytic solution which says x is equal to x0 plus, no, time, so I could have just left that, x0 times cosine omega and t. And, uh, well, we can, just di we can just differentiate that ourselves. And we can differentiate it numerically saying that x dot is approximately equal to x minus x old over delta t. And so this is something that we can do in a loop in MATLAB. And then we can differentiate this again, x double dot 
is equal to x dot minus x dot o over delta t. And now this one, this one, we can compare this one directly with the experimental one. So this is our analytic, this is our analytic prediction of what the acceleration ought to look like based on our, uh, this is our, sorry, oh, well we can, sure, it's better, we can, we can do the, we can do the, we can do the differentiation analytically, and I also want you to do it numerically. We want to do it analytically and numerically. And then what we want to do is we could we could then we could put little x's here and we can plot together. Okay, and so I have to find the right color. So then we can put a little legend on here where we said this thing is the analytic x double dot. This one is the experimental. Now notice the experimental, it's going to have like some noise in it. So I should have drawn the experimental one to have a little noise in it. And then, and then we can also, I'm trying to find some, a color that might stand out. I'm going to try and use the blue here. And then we can also use dots here. We can plot the dots along with it where the dots are the numerical x double dot from here. Okay? All right. But those are the things that we want you to do. There's always a thing that says, like, what to turn in. We'll, we'll deal with that another time. So. All right. Thank you.